hey, Larry, come on over here. I have a question for you. How did the sound of that clap get from you over there where I was? Well, when I clap my hands like this, it forces the air between them outwards, and that bit of air pushes on the next bit of air, and pushes it, so it pushes on the next bit of air, and so on, all the way to you. I'm willing to bet you have a way of showing how that happens. Well, unfortunately, air is invisible, so we can't see the air vibrating, but we can illustrate it with this air track. These little gold gliders here ride on the air track, and we've got seven of them on the track, and you can think of them as representing little bits of air, and instead of clapping, what I'll do is give a push to the first one, and then it'll push on the next one and push on the next one, just like sound traveling, until it reaches the one at the far end. Why don't you go down there to catch it? Okay. Just as the professor explained about sound moving through the air, the movement of the first glider started the next glider into motion, and so on, until the motion crossed the track between us. So the glider reaching me is like a sound reaching my ear. That's right. Let's try it again, and this time don't catch it. This time the glider hit the bumper at the end of the track, bounced back, and sent the motion traveling back to Professor Taylor. Seems a little like an echo to me. That's right. When a traveling sound meets an obstacle, some of the sound bounces back, just like the glider, and that's what we call an echo. So the main point we're trying to make here is that when you're sending a sound from you to me, you're not sending air from you to me, but rather a vibration through the air. Exactly so. Okay.